All right, iron deficiency anemia, the most common form of anemia. Iron deficiency is a form of microcytic anemia, so we expect to see a mean corpuscular volume of less than 80 femtoliters. And of course, the definition of anemia itself is a hemoglobin level below 12 grams per deciliter in females and 13.5 grams per deciliter in males. Around 9-12% to of white women have iron deficiency anemia, while in black and Hispanic women, the prevalence is nearly 20%. It's also estimated that around 10% of patients over 65 with iron deficiency anemia have an underlying gastrointestinal cancer, so in these patients it's crucial to rule out malignancy. Now some physiology. Iron is a crucial part of the haemoglobin molecule. Therefore, if we are lacking iron, then it's logical that haemoglobin production is impaired. Specifically, it's part of the formation of heme, which is the portion that actually binds oxygen. Heme is formed in a series of steps, starting from glycine and succinyl coenzyme A, which is acted on by aminolebulinic acid synthase and forms aminolebulinic acid. Aminolebulinic acid dehydratase then converts this into porphobilinogen. Porphobilinogen then is converted into uroporphyrinogen 3. That then gets turned into coproporphyrinogen 3. That's turned finally into protoporphyrin 9. Phew, we got there in the end. It's this molecule that gets combined with iron by ferrochelatase, also known as heme synthase. So, if you don't have enough iron, you can't produce enough heme, so you can't produce enough hemoglobin. Causes for iron deficiency are either that iron is being lost, such as in the case in chronic bleeding, like in colorectal cancers, peptic ulcers, or even with menstruation. But you can also end up iron deficient from an inadequate intake of iron, which would normally be around 15 milligrams a day, depending on the age and the sex. So an adult male needs around 8 milligrams a day, an adult female needs around 18 milligrams a day, and this amount can even go up to 27 milligrams during pregnancy. Poor absorption of iron is also a cause of iron deficiency anemia. And bear in mind that iron needs acid to be absorbed properly, so people using proton pump inhibitors or patients with a gastrectomy are at risk. Additionally, iron is primarily absorbed in the duodenum, so you can also have problems absorbing iron in things like celiac disease. Clinical features for iron deficiency anemia include the usual anemia symptoms such as pallor, especially in places like the conjunctiva, fatigue and weakness, dyspnea, headaches and dizziness, but can have more specific findings such as pica, where patients have a craving to chew on certain items like ice. Diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia is based on labs and peripheral blood smear. Similarly to other types of anemia, we would ask for a complete blood count to see haemoglobin levels and the mean corpuscular volumes that we would expect to be below 80 femtoliters. You may also see low reticulocytes, which are a good indicator of bone marrow activity. Usually in adults, the value is between 0.5 and 2%. Although in anemic adults, you'd expect the percentage to be higher if the bone marrow was working correctly. Additionally, you'd look at the iron status of the patient, serum iron levels would be low, normal range being 60 to 160 micrograms per deciliter. Ferritin levels indicate the amount of stored iron in the body, and levels would typically be low. A normal range is between 12 and 300 nanograms per milliliter in males, and 12 to 150 nanograms per milliliter in females. Transferrin saturation would also be low, generally considered underneath 20%. Total iron binding capacity would be higher, meaning that there's more space for iron to be bound. Peripheral blood smear would show small hypochromic red blood cells. Treatment would be to investigate and treat the underlying cause and to provide iron supplementation. Iron tablets are commonly prescribed roughly at 300 milligrams per day. However, due to the GI side effects such as constipation or diarrhea, dark stools and often stomach pain, the patient compliance is low. So, intramuscular injections or intravenous infusions may sometimes be used. 